What's up, everybody? We all know that we would never give atropine in a complete heart block, otherwise known as a third degree block, right? We all know this, right? Because it's not going to work wrong. What's up, everybody? My name's Justin. We're going to do a quick little medical chat coming up on this episode of the Dr. Medic. All right, I've heard this discussion a thousand times. I've seen it with students. I've seen it with preceptors out on the truck. I've seen it with all kinds of people who are trying to quiz somebody else just to show them how much that they know. Hey, what, what would you do uh, for your stable bradycardic patient who's in a complete heart block? What's the first thing you're going to do for him? And then as soon as somebody says atropine, they go, ah, nope. That won't work because the ventricles are below uh, where atropine is going to work. And over the last 20 years, that has set off this massive uh, black and white answer to whether or not you can give atropine in a complete heart block. And we all got to know by this point, things ain't always black and white. Sometimes we got to dig a little deeper and critically think and use our heads. Let's take a look and dive in. I'm going to show you two types of examples of complete heart blocks, and we're going to show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. So first, let's draw a little bit of a complete heart block here on the screen. Do not make fun of my terrible artwork. All right, we take a look at this rhythm right here, and let's suppose that this is all you can see, and you can see that the P waves march out on their own, and they don't have any relationship to the QRS, and we have a slow rhythm that's about 20 beats a minute, and this is telling us this is a complete heart block, otherwise known as a third-degree heart block. Let's take a look at what this looks like in the heart. Okay, so just a quick refresher. This is our electrical conduction part of the heart. And we have our SA node up there, which fires at 60 to 100 beats a minute. We have our AV node, which has an inherent rate of 40 to 60 beats a minute. And we have our Purkinje fibers down here that have an inherent rate of 20 to 40 beats a minute. In this case, when we look at this rhythm right here and we try to tie that to what we see on the screen, we are going to assume that because this is a wide QRS, it is a slow rhythm, that basically what we have is an idioventricular rhythm hidden behind a bunch of P waves. That's all in a, a complete heart block is anyway. A complete heart block is when one part of the heart assumes that something above it is no longer working and so an escape rhythm takes place which is something that is good. We want escape rhythms to take place otherwise we would have no fail-safe mechanisms if our SA node stopped working. And so in this case since we have these giant wide and bizarre QRSs we could probably assume the pacemaker for this heart is probably somewhere right here. And we know it's down there because it's less than 40 beats a minute. It's wide and bizarre. We know it's ventricular in nature. And in this case, it would probably make sense if we said that right about there, I was going to screw up my screen, that right about here is the block. And so if the block is right there, we could have P waves firing from this SA node, firing from this AV node. They never make it down. The ventricles don't know what in the world's going on. So they fire on their own at their inherent rate at 20 to 40 beats a minute. Gives us this beautiful looking complete heart block that we see on the screen right here. Atropine, which is an anticholinergic and works on the inhibitory nature of the vagus nerve that kind of goes right along by the AV node, blocks acetylcholine. And without getting too far into what atropine does, it ends up blocking blocking acetylcholine, blocking vagus nerve effect, which therefore allows the heart rate to rise up on its own. And it does that basically through increasing conduction through the AV node by uh, blocking any vagal nerve uh, stimulation. And so if I give somebody atropine in this case, we would say, wow, man, that AV node's going to fire more or the SA node's going to fire more. But what difference does it make? Because there's a block there. There's no way that that electricity is going to make its way down to the ventricles. And you'd be right. It wouldn't work and it'd be an absolute waste of time and you should not administer atropine to this patient because it's going to do absolutely nothing. But it doesn't stop there. We have to remember that there are multiple forms of conduction delays and conduction blocks. Not all of them are going to end up with a ventricular escape rhythm. Let me show you what I mean. Let's draw a different complete heart block. Now again, don't make fun of my, uh, my my terrible artwork there, but we still have a complete heart block here. We have no relationship between the P waves and the QRS, but what's the big difference? What do you see? Those QRSs look a lot different. One, there's more of them. Two, they're narrow. And so we have basically what looks like a junctional rhythm in the background as opposed to a ventricular escape rhythm in the background down here. And so down here we say we have a ventricular, and up here, 
Why is that important? Because this person up here who has this junctional escape rhythm, we know that the pacemaker of the heart is not originating here. It's not. The pacemaker must be originating up in that AV node or maybe even in the superior portion of the, of the bundle of his. And so instead of this block being right here, the block could be right here. And in this case, we could still see these P waves coming up here from the top which you see right here, these P waves here, this P wave here, but they don't make it through. And so, but since it's superior enough, since it's high enough up in the conduction system, we could still have some inherent cells with enough automaticity right here in the AV node that they fire from this area. And if they fire from that area, they're going to give you a narrow complex junctional escape looking rhythm in the background. And guess what? If this person is stable, maybe we don't need to be as super aggressive and jump right into pacing or giving epinephrine or something like that. And you know what? In this case, maybe we don't have to be so aggressive and pace the patient. You know why? Because if the pacemaker is coming from that AV node, we might be able to be a little bit more conservative and give this patient a half milligram or a milligram of atropine and see if we can get some increased conduction going through that AV node that will then increase conduction down to the QRS and actually speed up this rate a little bit. So can you give atropine in a complete heart block? No. Yes. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.